The next topic on page 87 is singular and plural. Plural we had already seen. The form of noun or pronoun or verb which refers to only one person or one thing. For example, child, tiger, cup, I, it, he or she is singular. We had already learned this. Plural would have been tigers. Plural of child would have been children. Okay, so this we already know. Now sound. Sound is something that you hear. Can you hear my voice? So that is a sound that you hear. Uh, can you hear the birds twittering outside? So that is a sound that you hear. Can you hear the sound of the aeroplane taking off? So some sounds are loud, some are soft, some are sweet, some are melodious, while some are like noise, but those are all sounds. Speech, the ability to speak, bol sakne ki kshamata. We all can speak, no? A speech is given on a particular topic. Now, I use speech for communicating my ideas, but I am not giving one bhashan over here, correct? So I am not giving a speech, but sometimes on annual day, you might be told to give a speech for thanksgiving or the guest, chief guest gives a speech or the principal gives a speech on um, 15th August, on 26th January, generally Rashtrapati or the president of our country, the prime minister specially address the country and they give a speech. So that speech is different. The lines which an actor says in a play, that is also called a speech. Of course, we call it dialogue, but what he is giving the dialogue delivery is also a speech only. Okay, so whatever you speak will be called speech. Speak is a verb while speech is a noun. Stanza. Now we had seen paragraphs earlier. Now stanza you will find in poems. We do not call each part a paragraph. We call it a stanza. A stanza is a part of a poem. The lines of a stanza usually have rhyme at the end. That means rhyming words. Just now we saw how uh, king and ring or sing and all rhyme. So those type of words. Separate stanzas in a poem are shown by more space between them or distance between them or by changing the arrangement of the lines. Now in your lessons, in between we have some poems. So let us look at one poem. Okay, quickly go to page number 71. You can see there is one poem called the lark. Now there are two stanzas that you can see. Has everyone gone to 71? You can see one stanza. And then there is a little space. Of course, we do not have so much space in between normally, but here because of the picture and then you have a second space. Also, because the first stanza is about a bird, that is why they have given it up and the second one is about a goldfish. So, they have given it down where the water is to show you also that there are two stanzas in that poem. Have you understood how to separate stanzas? But we do not call it paragraphs. When it is a lesson, in prose, we call it paragraph. Next, statement. Now, statement is something that you state, say or write and give definite information. For example, the sky is blue. That was a statement. Statement can be negative also. Suppose I say the sky is not green. Correct? So, that is a negative statement. Statement or a sentence, what we call declarative sentence. Stress. Now this stress has two meanings. Normally people say I have a lot of stress, I have a lot of tension. That is not the stress that we are talking about. Here stress is the extra force used while pronouncing to say a word or a syllable. For example, in English, ing is stressed more. Us par zyada zor diya jata hai. We do not say English. We say English. So we give more force or more stress on ing. Now, here they have given only one example. Let me give you some examples where the word, the stress will change and the meaning will also change. See, for example, if I say P R E S E N T. Now, the first time if I say present. If I say present, it will mean I present the prize to somebody. It means to give. It's a verb. But suppose now I stress 
on the second part present so that means i am stressing on this part we don't stress on present we don't say present we never stress on this part correct so first i did on first this part and then present a present can mean gift or it can mean opposite of absent so how you pronounce it where you put the stress the meaning can change let us take another example when we write c o n d u c t if i say conduct it will mean behavior it is a noun but if i say conduct and i give more stress on duct then i conduct a meeting so then the meaning changes so some words you can put stress only in a particular place because that is how it is pronounced but sometimes when you change the stress the meaning will change next syllable now syllable while teaching you intelligent i already told you it had four syllables each syllable will have the sound of a vowel and that is how we'll be able to split a word when you have very big words and you feel dictation it's very difficult how to do such big big words you split them into parts now here part of a word that is one vowel sound in each syllable it may have one or more consonant sounds maybe at the beginning or at the end and the syllables over here you can see a go a go so it has two syllables action ak and shin two syllables creature two syllables joker has two syllables but x pl ne shin so it has four syllables so don't look and say explanation is such a big spelling how will i do it split it up and then you'll find it easy words like no cat ask have only one syllable if it has only one syllable it is known as monosyllabic mono means one okay like when we have pretty you have two syllables beautiful you have three syllables but intelligent you have four syllables but if i say yes no on in two those are only one syllable have you understood what is a syllable a word can be made up of one or more syllables tense we have already seen past tense present tense future it tells us when it will happen i go is present tense i will go or i shall go is in the future and i went that is in the past title also we had already seen the name of a book poem story picture etc or even when we write an essay we cannot directly start writing the essay what exactly is the topic so we write the title on top next verb verb is a word or group of words that show action what people or things do and what happens to them for example i write okay kriya action so i am writing or i fall or i float float on the water a verb may also describe an event event means happening what happened it rained or it became dark or a state state means kis sthiti mein for example she was unhappy verbs have different forms that show tenses we already did that in the future past and present tense now here most children know that verbs always have action not necessary to be hone ki kriya i am i am fat or i am a teacher in that i am not doing anything i just am so that is a state of being or suppose i feel uh, sad so suppose i feel mehsoos karti hu that means that can be something i am not doing an action as such i am not writing i am not jumping i am not uh, scrubbing anything but i just feel something so sometimes verbs can be with no action also now if i say i have a car am i driving a car am i doing some action no i just possess a car i own a car i have a car okay 
verbs have singular and plural forms only in the case of present tense. For example, sits, he, she and it, you have to be careful, takes one extra s or es or ies. Let us just see. See for example, we write I sit, you sit, but for he and she, we will write sits, correct? We sit, they sit. So you only have to be careful of he, she and it because it will take one extra s. But in some verbs it might take es. For example, I go, you go, we go and they go. But he, she and it we will write, have to write goes. So we have to write this extra es. Verbs which end with y. Like for example, study. I study, you study, we study and they study. But he and she studies. S-T-U-D. The Y will change to I and E. S. Studies. Got it? Next, the verb be. That means am, are, is, are was, were, being, been or of have, have, has, having, had. For do, we use does, he does, she does, we do, we are doing, that is in the continuous tense or we did in the past tense, we have done in the perfect tense, can be used as main verbs in a sentence. Example, I am 12 years old. So, am comes from the verb to be, hone ki kriya which I told you. They were ready. For have, I have a brother. The dinosaur had a long tail. For do, do your best. Now do of course is an order, but that is also the verb. These verbs are also used with the main verbs and then they can be called helping verbs or auxiliary verbs. Or if you want to write in Hindi, you can write Sahayak Kriya. Now how do they help? The forms that we learnt in B, I am, you are, he is, she is, when you use it along with ing, it becomes the continuous tense. For example, I am running. If you wanted to say it in the past continuous, I was running. It is raining. They were playing. So over here, they were is not the main verb. But the playing or the running, that is the main verb. Have plus main verb shows the action that is complete. So, we can put the third form of the verb after it and that will show Purna Kriya or complete. For do, we use it for questions. Do you know the answer? Did you see the bird? What do you want? What did the queen tell you? And for negative sentences, we did not go back. Now see here, am, is, are, this all comes from be, correct? Was, were, will be and then after this you can put the ing form. For example, I am teaching, he is sleeping, we are learning, he was writing, we were playing, they will be eating. So you can make continuous tense by using these helping verbs and then putting the actual verb that you are doing, actual action that you are doing in ing. Now for have, we can put have, has, had and will have. Plus we use the third form that means done, eaten, beaten and then we will know that it has been done completely. Like I have eaten my food, he has eaten his food, we had done our homework or we will have completed grammar by today. All grammar topics we will complete. So we will have completed yani purna kar chuke honge, abhi tak nahi hua hai. So it shows in the future it will be completed. Now do. We also have one more auxiliary verb or helping verb. From do, 
we have do, does, did and this we use for negative that means I did not go to school. He does, does not go or do you go for question also we use these to make this into a helping verb. I do my homework, do is the main verb but do you know then or there no is the main verb. Next column be and have auxiliaries to have negative like for example do is not needed when these are used. Are you writing a story? Have you written this? Why have you come back? I was not feeling well. She had not seen the book. So it is not necessary we all only use do. We can use have and be also for asking questions and for making negative. There are other verbs like can, could, may, might, shall, would, should, must, ought to, used to. These are also used as modal auxiliary. Example, I can swim. What does can show? That means I have the ability to swim. I am able to swim. I can understand English. That means I am able to understand English. You may come in. May shows you permission. Miss, may I come in? So you, she says, yes, you may come in. She is giving you the permission. You should not work too hard. Otherwise, you will feel tired. So we are giving you advice. You should study regularly. I am advising you. Must you go? Do you have to go? So all these helping verbs will also be used before the main verb. Okay. So let us have a look at all these. Can, could, should, must, used to, may, might, shall, which others have they given over here? They have given you ought to also, you may not be very comfortable with that. Same like shall we have will, ought to. Okay, let us see each one what it means. First one, can, we know it means ability, that means kar sakne ki kshamata. Like when we say, I can understand French, could. It can be used in the past tense also. When I was young, I could run very fast, but now I cannot. Should. Advice. You should listen to your parents. Must. Compulsion. You must come on time. Used to. That means what you used to do when you were small or many years ago. You had a habit of doing it before. Habitual past. May. May can be shown for permission, may I come in or may can also be used to show maybe, maybe not, it's not sure, I may go out in the evening. Same way might also shows you not sure, I might go out in the evening. Shall we saw will be used with I and we, will can be used with all the others to show future tense. Ought to is similar like should, advice, but there is a slight difference. When it is your duty, you have to understand what you have to do, then we use ought to. You ought to never tell lies. You have to understand that. You ought to respect your parents. You ought to greet your teacher. That means when she comes in, all of you all sit down, you all don't even get up to say good morning. So you ought to do it, that is your duty. You ought to respect the flag, our national flag. Okay, so all those are your helping verbs. After this will come your real verb. Can dance or she could dance when she was small or you should dance for the annual day. You are so good. So I am advising you. Okay, so the actual verb, the main verb comes after all these. Next, they have taken. Next, we are seeing vowels. A speech sound you made without closing any part of your mouth or throat. For example, o, e. We already told you a, a, e, e are all vowel sounds. A vowel letter is a letter of the alphabet that stands for a vowel sound. A, E, I, O, U. 
The letter Y also stands for a vowel. I had already given you an example. When we take cry, try, it acts as a vowel. Note that one letter may stand for different sounds. For example, A. Now look at all these words that I am going to write down. All. The next word is eight. Ant, arm. Okay, so in all these we have used a, but you can see in this the sound is a, all. Here, a, it, a, ant, a, arm. So in English, how is the a sound? In Hindi, we have different sounds, a, a, e, e, u, u and all. But in English, you have to understand over there, how is it? For bat, the a sound, bat, cat. So, the a sound is a sound. But when we say aeroplane, so a sound. So, a doesn't have a fixed sound. It depends on the word, how it is used. Is it in the beginning? Is it in the middle? And for each type, you'll find it is different. Here it is, a, 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 got it? And the last word that we come to, word, a group of sound or letters that has meaning. A word is a unit of language. A word is written by leaving space on both the sides. So when you finish writing one word, you leave about one finger space and then you write the next word. Now that word can be a noun, it can be a an adjective, it can be a verb, it can be a helping verb, it can be anything that you learned just now in grammar. These are like little strings of beads. When you make all these words together, okay, you put little words together in a little string and then you get a beautiful little necklace. So same way, the way you make a sentence, you put little words in it and you make beautiful sentences and that is how you use a language. Have you understood your topic of grammar in your textbook which has been covered totally in the last few pages?